on the line, we do have head coach, Sonny Dykes, TCU head coach, after a huge win heading to Lawrence, Kansas this week. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Everything going okay? Oh, yeah, we're doing perfectly fine. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Um, before we get to Kansas, I do want to ask one question off the top. I mean, Max Duggan, somebody who's been around for a while, your quarterback, I thought, me personally, I thought I had an idea of what he was as a quarterback. Um, and then he loses his job in the offseason after, and then after, obviously, gets it back after Chandler Morris gets hurt. But it seems like this system that you and Gary Riley have uh, has unlocked a new level for him. And my question is, what type of things are you guys doing to bring out kind of an increased confidence in him or decisiveness that I didn't see previously, personally, and I didn't think that he had in him? Yeah, you know, I think um, I think one of the things that we always try to do is is when we're when we are putting an offense together is say, okay, what what is our quarterback good at doing? What's he comfortable doing? And then let's ask him to do that a bunch and not ask him to do things that he doesn't like or he's not comfortable with or he, or he doesn't uh, may not necessarily fit his skill set. And so I think, you know, I think Coach Riley and our offensive staff have done a nice job of, you know, paring some things down um, and, you know, trying to allow Max to, to use his strengths. And, you know, Max has a very strong arm. He's a really good runner. Um, you know, as a, as a big physical guy, he's got good speed. So it's, it, we can do some things that are pretty unique with him. And, and, you know, to Max's credit, he has really just come on and developed as a, as a player, you know, he's gotten, he's gotten opportunity to get a lot of reps in practice. And truly he's one of those guys that you walk off the practice field every day and you go, you know, he made two or three throws today that I'm not sure he could make yesterday. And then you, Go to go to the next day's practice. You walk off the field and you go, man. He made two or three throws today that I don't think he could have made yesterday. And so, he's just progressing as, as a player. I think he's getting uh, more comfortable in the scheme. I think his decision making is is faster. Uh, I think he's playing with a lot of certainty. And you know, and the big thing for us, honestly, he's just done a really good job of doing what we're asking him to do. So it's been a it's been fun to watch him. It's been fun to watch him become more and more confident every week. And you know, the great thing about it is we've got a good supporting cast, and so he doesn't need to go out there and, and try to make every play. He can he can dump the ball down to a back, and, and you know, we have some guys that can, can make plays for him. And so it's it's a comforting thing for a quarterback when when he knows he doesn't have to, to make about, you know, 10 game-changing plays every game. Coach Mike Craven here. We appreciate you having uh, you coming on. You know, what I'm curious about, you had played against this TCU team a couple times at SMU. Obviously, you watched a lot of film on them. Were you surprised at how much talent was there when you first got there, or, or did you kind of know that you were stepping into a locker room that was a little bit more ready-made to win than a lot of new coaches get to in their first year at a new job? Yeah, yeah, I knew I knew the kind of players that Coach Patterson had recruited. You know, I knew, um, you know, we, we tried to recruit a lot of those guys when we were at SMU, I mean, almost all of them, and, and so... Um, you know, I knew that they had guys that can run. I think that was the thing that, that stood out was just the overall team speed. Um, you know, we had some deficiencies, just like any any program does. We had some areas where we needed to go out and find some personnel and some guys that could come in and help us immediately. But but overall, we knew that there was some talent here. We knew that um, we just kind of needed to get get the guys pointed in the right direction and get them, you know, get them really working together and committed to, to being good on and off the field. And so, you know, the guys have done a great job. I mean, that's what's been impressive is is they've done everything we've asked them to do. They have um, responded uh, incredibly well to, to you know, to the plan and have been open to, to doing things differently. And sometimes when you take over a program, those are the kind of growing pains that you have. And so far, our guys haven't done that. Now, again, we have a small sample size. We're only a, a third of the way through the season. But our our, player, our guys are playing hard, and they're doing things the right way, and it, it's given us a chance to win every Saturday. You guys are going on the road and playing in a sold-out stadium. ESPN Game Day is going to be there. Kind of a similar situation a couple weeks ago when y'all played SMU. You know, Ford Stadium was going to be packed. Obviously, there's history there between you and the Mustangs and TCU and all that kind of stuff. Does that experience for the team kind of playing a, above those, above that noise and putting that in the back seat and having such a good performance against SMU, does that help going into kind of this atmosphere where you're going to have to kind of blind out that noise again? I think so. I think so. One of the things we talk about all the time, 
uh, you know, to our guys is the importance of getting off to a good start, in particular on the road. Um, and we did that against SMU. We went up 28-7. I didn't think we closed the game out well. You know, I thought our guys got a little distracted, um, lost focus a little bit. And that was something that at halftime last week, you know, we won't roll into halftime against Oklahoma. I think we're up uh, 41-17 at halftime. So I worried a little bit about how our guys would respond in the second half. And to to their credit, you know, they were talking about that coming up at halftime. You know, from, from the field to the locker room, everybody was saying, hey, look, let's don't lose our focus. We lost it last week. Let's make sure that we, you know, we play hard the second half. And we really came out and had a really good halftime and, and really had a good performance in the second half. So I think this is a team that learns from uh, from experience and learns from the mistakes that they've made in, in, in the past. And, you know, hopefully we can continue to, to understand how important it is, to, again, to start fast and to, to make sure that we play for 60 minutes. You know, the thing about Kansas, if you look at them, they've played four really competitive football games, and, and they know how to win. They know how to make plays down the stretch, um, and, and we haven't had to do that up to this point. You know, most of our games have been, you know, kind of decided early in the game. And so um, this is a group that knows how to win, and that's going to be a challenge for us. To talk about Kansas for a second, just how quickly is it obvious on tape to you and the coaching staff just how good this Kansas team, not not just good for Kansas, but just good in general? Yeah, you know, it's funny. We had the open week. Uh, we had our open week early after a Tarleton game, and I, I jumped in here and looked at some Kansas tape and uh, you because know, I knew they were scoring points. So I was just curious to see what they were doing and put the film on and I'm like wow these guys are really good uh they've got a great scheme they got a bunch of good players the quarterbacks playing at a really high level um got good skill around them you know an experienced offensive line and it just seemed like they were playing together and really doing a good job of not having penalties not turning the ball over executing at a high level and anytime an offense does that then they're going to move the football and they're going to score points and, and they've been able to do that and they've got some really good players I mean their quarterbacks probably playing as well as anybody in college football right now so it's going to be a challenge for us to just do so many different things uh, to put your players in conflict and you have to play assignment football it's almost like playing against an option team and they'll have some some option elements and some of the things that they do on offense Um, so you better you better line up right you better play uh, you better play technique the right way and, and they do a nice job of generating big plays as well so it's an offense that's multifaceted and as I said executing at a really high level. You know, uh, your your team's kind of known for passing the ball a lot. Everybody's talking about Max Duggan, but that running game's averaging over 250 yards a game, I think around seven yards per carry. Just as a, as a former play caller, as a guy who spent a lot of time around offensive football, just how much easier does that make the job when there is balance there? Well, that's the biggest game changer there is. When you can, when you can run the football, that changes everything. It really does. It's um, you know, and we felt like the, our offensive line was the strength of our team, you know, coming into the season. We have a, a big physical group and uh, a lot of experience. And so when you can run the ball, then it forces defenses to, you know, to get an extra people involved in the run game, which allows you to throw it. And then when you throw it well, then, you know, they've got to walk another safety back and, and try to play off of you and do things that allow you to run it. And so, you know, when you can, when you can line up and run the ball when everybody knows you're going to run it, that that is uh, that's the sign of a good offense, and we've been able to do that so far um, this year. Now, obviously, we got to do it again on Saturday, and got to do it every Saturday. But but that's been to me one of the the most pleasant surprises that we've had so far this season. Uh, you're a former baseball guy, played baseball at Texas Tech. I, you know, I grew up loving the sport as well. You know, a lot of stuff's been made, you know, over the cut-ins to, to football games and stuff with Aaron Judge chasing that record. Are you somebody who thinks that Aaron Judge is now the home run king, or are you still more of a, a Barry Bonds guy? Well, you know, that's a good question. I kind of grew up in the in the steroid era, um, <laughs> was playing college baseball in the late 80s and early 90s, and, and uh, saw the effects of, <laughs> of some of that with, with players, uh, the guys that I played with and guys I knew, so... It, it was an interesting time to be a, a college baseball time, and I can only or a college baseball player rather, and I can only imagine what it was like to to be a major league player at that time, um, just with all the stuff that was going on in the game. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's a good question. Um, you know, it was a it was to me the most exciting time of baseball. I mean, you had some some of the greatest players I think that have ever played. I mean, you talk about pitchers and power pitchers like Roger Clemens and guys like that, and then. Obviously, you had the home run chase with McGuire and, and uh, Sammy Sosa, and then you had Bonds doing his thing. And it's funny, I remember watching TV back then, and 
you know, they were cutting into friends for Barry Bonds at bats. Uh, not only sporting events they were cutting into, but like, you know, like I said, uh, Thursday night television, friends and, and the stuff that everybody watched back then to watch Bonds hit. And I always thought that was pretty cool. Um, because, you know, they either walked Barry or he hit a home run. And that yeah. was the kind of, he was at that stage of, of, of play where, you know, every single at bat was really, really exciting. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, to me, I, I just from kind of growing up there, it's hard to, 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 to say that those guys aren't the, the home run kings because I know they provided a lot of entertainment for people that were baseball fans at, at that point. And so, you know, for me, probably Bonds, but a lot of that has to do with just when I was raised and when I was paying attention to baseball. Yeah, I think I think we're in agreement with you here. So no juice for Sonny Dykes is what I heard there. <laughs> <laughs> no juice. I wouldn't – yeah, I was I was not going to be good no matter how much. Juice <laughs> I took. So I was uh, <laughs> so I was smart enough to know. Hey, look, just just uh, you know, just enjoy watching every, the good players play and be a part of a team, and, and that's that's about what my experience was. All right, coach, we really appreciate you coming on. I know it's a busy week. Uh, good luck in Kansas and safe travels. Okay, man, appreciate you guys having me. Thanks.